I mean, you, you, by that you make sure that you, you're not in a psyche. So this is a simple example of an index. Um, this is how an index looks like. Uh, so here, on the right side, you can see, you can think of those things as documents. So it can be an HTML page, for example. And on the left side, you can see the index. So basically, it's a lookup. So there are terms which appear in your HTML file, right? So each there is a word. Then there are basically sentences. They, they are made up of words, basically. So each word are basically broken up into terms. And those terms are stored in the index. So using that index, you can refer or you can uh, make a note of where it appears, so which document it's appearing. So we'll go into details uh, of this in the next slide, where I'll show what is a document ID and how it is stored, how basically the occurrences of these words are stored. So this is a little, uh, uh, going into a little detail. Um, so top you can see the documents. So basically you create the inverted index. Inverted index or the postings list, it's another name. So it's basically having a word, like see you can see apple there, so that's the term which is appearing in a document, or it's a term basically. And on the doc ID is a unique identifier for each document. Then you have positions in which it appears. So say for example, uh, red appears in the first position. Right? Here, red sweater. So similarly, uh, you can say maybe sweater appears in the second position. So basically, those things are stored here. So this is the inverted index. This is like a lookup. So whenever you're looking for, say, Apple, if the search query is Apple, you come to this index, look for documents where Apple is appearing, and you present those documents to the user. So it's basically a dictionary, right? So how do you look for a how do you look in a dictionary? You look for a word. Basically, it's sorted, right? So it makes this. Uh, I mean, it makes uh, our job simple to look through the dictionary. It's, it's basically a dictionary. So these are some indexing issues. Um, so when we type, how many of you use and in in the search queries? And in, yeah, we use a lot of that, right, in the search queries. So basically, those are called stop words. So those doesn't, I mean, those things not always adds value to what we are looking for. So basically, those are stop words. So we need to eliminate those top words when even we are indexing the pages. There may be a lot of and, and, the. So we need to um, take care of that. Uh, stemming is something like going to the root of a word. So there may be multiple uh, uh, ways of using a word. For example, stemming, stemmed, all of them have a root stem. So we need to take care of that when we index. Um, so metadata would be useful. Like for example, uh, in case of hyperlinks, there is something called the anchor text, which says, hey, here is the link for a product, so and so. So that tells information about what is that page. So such things are very important. So once you do all those things, uh, when you process the whole set of documents using the indexing challenges or by addressing those challenges, you should also apply the same techniques for the queries. So that's what is happening here. Even in queries, you it has to be processed. We have to eliminate all the stop words before we actually pass it to uh, the module which looks for all these terms. OK, so here is two important things to remember, precision and recall. Uh, I thought this slide, this slide is not good enough, so I'll probably give you an example of what is precision and recall. So precision and recall, these two terms are used uh, basically as a metric for a search engine. So it's very important that you remember these two terms. So let's say you have 400 documents to be indexed. So let's assume that we are, uh, we are uh, back in time and we have only 400 documents on the web and we want to index those. So say you searched for a term and you found 200 results in your search results. So this, this is what, say, Google presented you with 200 results. So out of them, 50 are relevant. So in that case, what is precision? Precision is number of relevant documents retrieved divided by the total number of uh, total number of documents retrieved. So 50 are relevant, 
but 200 were retrieved, so the precision is 0.25. So similarly, you, you can uh, so recall is another concept. So basically, it is number of relevant documents divided by the actual number of relevant documents. So often we don't have access to these. We don't know what Google has in their uh, store, right? So this is hard to compute all the time. Okay, going back to this. Any questions on precision and recall? Yeah. Is it the same thing that you divide? Precision and recall? No. In, case, in the first case, precision, it's basically out of the results what you got, how many are relevant. So if say you got 200 results, 200 results as a search result, and say out of them 50 are relevant, rest of them were not relevant to your query. So in that case you consider 50 as the denominator. The numerator is the, uh, okay, I think 50 as... Oh, I see. So basically here, precision is number of relevant documents retrieved. So, yeah. Relevant by you or by the search engine? Relevant by me. It's so this, you this determine part. the relevant, not the yes. actual engine? Yes, yes. Yeah. We, we are, remember, we are evaluating the search engine itself. So we need to be at that level. So if you have any questions, I would take it offline now, because I think I'm running out of... is important, right, in the sense that typically uh, it's, you know, you, you need a gold standard. You need uh, a committee to set up. Uh, by and large, you talk to any search engine developer, uh, how do you know the search, search relevance is not clear. So whether it's a document is regular or not, it's pretty subjective. There's no measure like that. Clearly, uh, while you are in keyword, and you say the keyword occurs, uh, you, you know, there's a syntactic match. Mm -hmm. And there you can be sure that you know, yes or not. So you can manually evaluate whether in the result that keyword that you say is there or not. Unfortunately, uh, you if, if that's all the search engines did, then they won't be very good. When you ask for car, you will expect to find pages that will mention automobile. Okay. What do you call it? Is that uh, if the page returns, uh, you ask for car and page returns, uh, search engine returns uh, page with automobile. What would you call it? A hit or a miss? Uh, so there are you know, challenges of that nature that you have to do. Um, semantically, it is actually what you ask for. Syntactically, it's not. So now, would you call it? A, you know, would you count it part of precision, or you would not? So as Dakshat mentioned, there are a lot of challenges in this field. Um, so basically, there, so your queries can be something like this. It can be characterized as, uh, basically it can be categorized into one of these. Basically, you can have a single word uh, query or a multi-word query where you have an, a logical operator which you want this and something occurring in a document or this or something occurring in a document. So this is just uh, an outline of how your queries can be. Um, so basically, these are some of the reasons why a search might fail. So, so as I mentioned, your search results depends on the search engine's scope. So basically, what documents it has crawled till now, and how uh, updated it, how often its index is updated. So remember, on the World Wide Web, we have so many pages, and there are a lot of people putting new pages every day, every second. And each of and the pages that are already existing are changing every second. So there are a lot of challenges to be addressed. Um, so how do we crawl those pages, or how, uh, how do we decide on what page to crawl? So say for example, I might be interested in uh, say finance. So I would be interested in a particular website, and that particular web, web page changes every second or every uh, minute. So should I crawl every minute? Oh, that that would be expensive for a search engine, right? So there are so many decisions to be made in that uh, arena. Um, it's not only English, there are a lot of other languages, so there is a lot of difference in languages as well. So again, there are challenges in how to uh, index uh, different, uh, you know, pages of different languages. Um, so these are some of the reasons, and 
some information on it. So often you see this, right? So if you have a very specific query, the search engine might not find it. So you you basically redefine your uh, information need in a different query. So has this happened any time to anyone? Um, so whenever we present uh, results to the user, so we should make sure that we present all the relevant documents at the top of it. We don't want the user to go to the second page. How many of you go to the second page of Google? Google results. Third page? Fourth page? Depends on circumstance. Not normally. Exactly. If you really, if you really want it, you go for the fourth page. But usually it's very important that... Most people don't go there. In fact, they would issue a query, a different query, and see if something comes out of us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So basically we re reformulate our information needs, right? So it's most important that the queries should be at the top of the results. So relevance ranking is very important. So there can be various factors that can be considered for relevance ranking. So some of them are something like this. So say a particular website is well known for a particular, uh, say in a particular context. You you know that that particular website is an authoritative source, uh, say for example, uh, Wikipedia. So most of the time when you search for something, the Wikipedia page is always at the top. So there are certain things like this which can be considered for relevance ranking. So it can be uh, more complex relevance, uh, relevancy uh, parameters like Spatial and temporal as well. Spatial is so where the person is searching from. Say, for example, if I'm searching from India for some information, I would probably prefer the local news first or local information first. So it also so relevancy can also be based on various of these factors. So Google has this uh, oh, maybe I can call a magic recipe. So page rank. So they came up with this algorithm uh, before they even actually commercialized Google. Page rank is basically asking the whole web to rank itself. So instead of you deciding what is good, what is bad, you ask the whole network to decide what is good, what is bad. So that's that's basically to summarize what is page rank. So as I mentioned, uh, as there was a question before, how, are, how do crawlers crawl? So basically, I told that all these web pages on the internet are connected through links. So page rank heavily depends on the links. It basically depends on links. So the idea is the most popular web page right, can be referenced in many, many places. So there may be a lot of other pages which refer to this page. So there may be a lot of uh, uh, links, incoming links to that page. So analyzing these patterns, like who is linking to whom, will allow us to come up with uh, the most popular pages. So that's the idea of page rank. So there is a whole uh, paper on that. If you're interested, you should read it, because uh, I think that's base for all the search, uh, search engine. Uh, Google is still using page rank now? Uh, definitely not. Uh, I think it, that might be the base of their. So this was long back. They came up with this algorithm. So now I think they tell they have, they consider more than 500 other features to actually rank the pages. That's pretty surprising. I mean that's like a huge number. 500 other features. Uh, I mean I might not have the latest information, but it may be more than that as well. So there are a lot of other things considered for actually ranking the relevance. So as you as you can see, relevancy ranking is so important now. Well, let's say that when you the user search for keyword, then the page rank the, the page rank will not does not say anything about relevance of the words. Yeah, the page rank only tell you how important the page is. It does not tell you how re relevant the page is to the to the keyword. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. To some extent, but not completely. Yes. Uh, so say you search for a term. Yeah. Okay, and you know that there are a lot of people who search for the same term. Yeah. And you can, and you can also, there are click-through logs which you can actually capture. So say if a user always searched for term and clicked on a particular document. So this is somewhat re related to relevance, right? So such things can be considered for relevance. 
Yeah. So basically, so analyzing click-through logs is a big research field now again. So all these huge uh, cloud computing infrastructure will help us to do all these things, right? So yeah. we can analyze click-through logs to also check relevance. So there are multiple ways of doing it. So I uh, I don't claim that PageRank is the only way of doing it. Yeah, I, I read the, the PageRank paper. And basically, it only considers the, how the page are linked with each other. So exactly. They so consider the link structure. Yeah, yeah. So, so when Google, they, when you use a search for keyword, so Google will uh, retrieve all the relevant document. Mm -hmm. And then okay. it can rank. Yeah. Rank. So, so, rank so how do you think it will rank? On, yeah, the ranking is based on page rank and some other factor. Right, exactly. Relevant. So some other factor is, one of these is this click-through logs. Yeah. So one of them so, is yeah. analyzing the click-through logs. You can actually come with relevance. So there may be multiple other features. Mm -hmm. That's not the only feature. So I might be missing a lot of them. Um, OK, so that's about that. I would skip this because it's not, um, I don't want to go into TF-IDF now. So there are various uh, techniques by which you can actually get the relevant documents. One is by exact keyword match, right? So if I search for a term, I would look for all the documents which has the exact match. Or I can also look for those documents which somewhat matches this. So that somewhat, that somewhat concept is vector space model. Uh, so it's uh, probably if you take an information retrieval class, you would be knowing uh, some of these uh, techniques. So Boolean retrieval is what you do an exact match. So you say, hey, here is a term. I want all the documents with these terms. So you do an exact match, get it. And if you say this and this, then those two should be present in the document. So basically, you can get to know all these techniques if you take uh, maybe an information retrieval class. Um, so, so Asan asked a very good question. So here, the last point here mentioned about the real world user behavior. So there, that's where you actually fit in the through logs. So it's a real world user behavior, right? So you capture what the user is intending to do based on the queries. So once you capture those, you have uh, basically a feel for what the user is looking for, and you can use that for relevance ranking as well. So how many of you think that search interface is very important? OK, nice. I got a mixed reaction. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely important, but that's not the core. So search interface is useful in terms of that it should be convenient for a user. So the user need not do a lot of work to put his queries. It should be easy to use. Like Google, there's a single bar where you can put all the query, whatever you want. Uh, how many of you use Google Advanced Search? One or two? OK. I, did, I never used it, so OK, that's good. So one or two of you have used it. So the simpler the user interface is, the better it is. So user interface is only a part of search engine, as I previously mentioned. Um, so user interface also involves, like, once you get the results, how do you present to the user? So some user interfaces present the snippet, as Google does. And some of them just present the title of the page. So how do you display it? Or do you, uh, uh, do you want to show the hits in a block letter style? Or, so there may be so many other things that need to be considered when you actually design a user interface. These are certain examples which are for user interfaces. Um, so this is the simplest one, what we have already most commonly seen. So how many of you think suggestions would definitely help when you're searching for search result? Definitely, right? Because you might not know exact, uh, so say for example, you're looking for a term, and you actually meant something, uh, maybe you spelled it wrong. So the, the auto-suggest thing would, uh, or rather the, uh, the suggestions that you get for search queries is very important. So this can be, uh, Basically, a human judgment is always the best for all these things. But looking at the number of queries you get at the search engine, which is like billions of queries, it's not possible for a human to sit there and do it. So we need some automatic ways of doing it. right? So there are various techniques to do that, and there are various algorithms to do that. Um, 
So these are some, basically, uh, I think they took an example of a search result and they just want to show. So this is what I was mentioning, the style in which search results are displayed. So you can block those letters which you think are relevant. So basically, this is the user interface part. So interface is important uh, as well when you are presenting results. So basically when you crawl, right, so when search engine, the first step is to crawl the web. So it can make use of various structures that are already present on the web. The, the basic thing is the link structure. So there can be various other uh, ways, like say for example, if your content is organized in form of directories, and each directory might correspond to a particular uh, topic. So in that case, it, it, that can be leveraged using uh, uh, an intelligent crawling mechanism. That's what is about leveraging content structure. So similarly, when you provide an interface, search interface, it has to be easy to navigate and the way it is presented should be good and it should be easy to use. Um, I would just probably skip these things. I think we are almost concluding the talk. So how many of you have shopped on uh, Amazon? Okay, that's nice. A lot of them, including me. Okay, um, so that will, so you, when you search for a product, at least when I search for, say, for a camera, I would look for certain specific things. I want this brand, and I want a particular lens for it. I want a particular zoom for it. I want a particular price. So there are various factors that I consider when I search for it, right? So if you make this particular thing convenient for the user to use, so the user will get back to your website again. So I always go back to Amazon because they provide all these features. So I can search for a camera which is above 200 and below 300. I can definitely do that on Amazon. So this is called faceted search. So you have certain things in mind and you, based on that, you search for what you want. And it's often very convenient for the user who's using the interface. Okay. So do you think, uh, can I host the index on a single machine? Of the, the index of the whole web? How many machines do you think I might need? If I want to do that, hundred. Yeah, apparently it's it can be in uh, maybe thousands or maybe a million. So it's a lot of data. So it's very hard to manage the data what is out there. So we need often a distributed approach to all these things. So it's very important that these algorithms what we design should be able to handle this, this lot of data in a distributed fashion. And at the same time, when, when someone wants to retrieve the queries, right, even the queries should be distributed. So it, not a single machine can actually handle this much amount of data. Google claims they have like uh, millions of computers out there which they use for all these things. Um, So as uh, so I previously mentioned about log analysis, so that's also an important thing to keep in mind. So when you when you analyze the logs, you get to know what the click through logs are, and you know what the user is looking for. So that can be used for relevancy ranking. So as you know, search is never perfect. So you search for an approximate uh, term, and basically you express your information needs in form of terms and you get approximate results. And you refine your query to get relevant results. So that's about uh, search. Uh, and I also mentioned about index, right? So how, how often should we update our index? So say uh, you uh, probably crawled a web website which is uh, not updated that much. Say uh, maybe a home page of a person or maybe this uh, uh, maybe a page which is not that updated very often, right? So in that case, we, I need not crawl that uh, every now and then. So, but there are certain pages which change very often, and we need to uh, crawl those pages very often. So these discriminations that we make 
or will help us a lot to reduce the amount of work that we need to do to crawl all these pages. So these are uh, some things will help is basically which you can keep in mind. So basically the user interface should be good. You need to show the matches by maybe showing it in a block word or something like that. So you need to maintain the index. You need to maintain all the machines which host those indexes. Uh, I don't agree with this, but still, yeah. OK. It's about search engines. Uh, if you have any questions. So do you want me to go back to precision and recall? I can explain it if everyone is interested in that. I don't know. OK, I would just. Recall. Yeah, what was recall? I didn't know. Right, I will probably describe this and then open up for questions. Um, so here, 400 means the total number of documents that you have with you to index. Like say, a search engine crawled for 400 documents. And that is the universe of the search engine. And there is nothing more than that. So that's about total documents. So you, it has indexed, it has an interface, and you go to the interface and for fire a query, and you say search. So say that search returned 200 results based on the term what you provide. So out of those, say 50 are relevant. So this relevance is actually decided by you as a human. So out of those 200, only 50 are relevant. So the precision here is the total number of documents that are returned that is total documents retrieved is in the denominator. Then the number of relevant documents retrieved, this is nothing but 50, right? Because we figured out that 50 documents are relevant to our query. So precision is basically 50 by 200, that is the number of relevant documents retrieved by the total documents retrieved, which is 0.25 in this case, right? Is precision clear? Any questions? OK. Recall is defined as the number of documents retrieved by the actual relevant documents. So I, m I missed relevant. So it's actually number of relevant documents retrieved by the actual number of relevant documents. So here, this is tricky, because the actual relevant documents, if I am at the user interface, I would never know how many documents are relevant, right? Because the, ser the, ser the crawler or the search engine part has everything. I don't have that information with me. If I am Google, I can do that. But I have to invest a lot of time even for doing that. So actual relevant documents, is it corresponds to 400. So out of these 400, how many are relevant? Because the user interface, the person who is using your search interface, doesn't really have access to all the documents it's hard to come up with this number, actual relevant documents. So recall is defined as the number of relevant documents retrieved divided by the actual relevant documents. So say, for example, out of these 400, for your search query, say there are 80 relevant documents. And this, this I figured out going manually to each of those documents. OK, I'll keep that number in my mind, 80. So 80 is the number of relevant documents in the whole corpus. Corpus is basically a set of a huge collection of text or documents. So here, right, so how, what is recall? Recall is the number of relevant documents retrieved, which is 50, right? And that divided by 80, which is the actual relevant documents in the whole corpus. So this will give me the recall. So this two, uh, these two things are used as a metric for the search engines you build. So that shows how well you index and how well you basically retrieve whatever you indexed. Is yeah. there any ideal metric percentage within which a recall or um, retrieval should, position should be there? Like for example, Google or whatever, what, what they aim at. Mm -hmm. Questions? Um, is there a, a metric? For example, if it's more than 80, OK, that's good. So is there any? Um, for, for what? Uh, for uh, he's asking, I was talking about precision and recall. Mm -hmm. So his question is, is there any uh, particular number that we look for in these two things? 
when we actually present or when we build a search engine? Good question. Um, answer is no. There's no such answer. And um, uh, like other question also, I say, what are the problems in fact you know, in defining this, uh, uh, formulating an answer to this question? This is a simple question. Uh, so you suppose you want to do a recall. To know the recall, actually, uh, and, and more precisely, to know the recall, you need to know for sure how many documents there are. Actually, you don't even know in this kind of environment. If you actually study the Google architecture or any other big search engine architectures, that's one thing. Uh, how many documents are duplicated? There's a constant process going on, by the way, to try and find the documents and duplicate it. And if you count duplicate it in, in, in the answer set. More importantly, if you go beyond that, um, uh, the simple uh, way, uh, you know, the simple way to think of query is the, that a keyword, and then to have a recall, uh, um, did you find all the documents where that word appear, right? If it was a phrase, then you ask the phrase issue. Um, in most cases, the answer to that will be an approximation and a statistics, and not a precise number itself, document, right? So uh, that would be itself a challenge. Um, the precision um, would require that you go through all the answers and say, yeah, it is in there or it is not. That's also not mostly humanly possible, right? Um, the when you suppose suppose you take two word uh, in a query, uh, what would you do? How would you count when one word appears? And what if you felt that one of the two words is more important than the other one, and if it appears, it makes sense or not. So, in the traditional information retrieval context, where you have a corpus, corpus meaning a database of documents, and they are stored in a computer, they are stored in this network, it is possible to come up with a precise answer to your question, or to typical, so, you know, this is a recall answer. In a relatively open environment, it is much, much harder. That say, when anybody does any research in generally the area of quality of quality processing or quality of search, they do present the results of this and recall, but they really have to be uh, formulated with a lot of uh, care. Um, so uh, uh, you have to create a specific data set, you have to create a measurement standard, you have to know ahead of the time that for this word so many documents are there. Right? Or for this word, there is such a, uh, this answer would be a correct answer and this would be wrong. So largely what happens is that it is done based on, by, by committee. And so one of the very well-known committee is called TREC. Uh, if you're online, do, uh, you can Google on TREC, TREC 9 or something along that line. And uh, what happens is that this is a, an algorithm of information retrieval, search engine primary information retrieval uh, techniques which is to count the words, count the currency of words, where the word word appear, and so on and so forth. So yeah, that is key, I see that probably the first one, that, that answer, yeah. And uh, you know, they set up a competition. And the competition, for example, would be, and now the competitions are fairly, uh, uh, you know, specialized. For example, competition with regards to occurrence of a gene name in the document. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, in the old days, in one of the old times, and this is, I'm talking about uh, early 90s, uh, when I used to do some research along this line, um, they, they had um, a bunch of stories, about 2,500 stories in, uh, from writer, news agency, and they had uh, presented, uh, created a, uh, you know, uh, a stand, an evaluation uh, suite, where you say, for this word, you must find this, uh, uh, you know, these would be all correct answers, and anything else would be wrong. Okay, and based on that, people will evaluate. Now they become a lot more, uh, you know, sophisticated. So you can look at some of the, you know, uh, posting of track uh, standards uh, uh, that are posted, and you can look at the description of it. But this is a track. And go and look at it uh, to get further insight 
is the formation of precision recall uh, based evaluation of in variety of situations. Again, this is going to be in the context of a, um, a limited or a, known, a priori known corpus. With the question, if you want to ask that question in the context of the web as a whole, that's yeah. But but that can be used also to compare algorithm algorithms, right? So that's yes. that's kind of a good use. If you know how many documents you're expecting, you can implement different different algorithms to you know try and save time or or money or you know to get different results and you can compare the metrics of precision recall to implement an algorithm based on you know what you're what you're looking for. So it's not so it's so it's more of well, I mean another kind of way to look at it is it's not just, you know, some arbitrary number you get and it's like, well, what's this number for? If you get these numbers when implementing different algorithms, you can compare to see, you know, which algorithm might be better than another based on those figures. So Yeah, but... Because uh, um, you know, cause yeah. you know, you know, what to expect back, so you might implement it one algorithm versus another depending on, you know, obviously how many, I mean, you might, to speed up processing or depending on how, you know, big the data set is, you might implement, you know, stemming here as opposed to here, you know, because you, you know, you get a better result. Um, but if the the difference in what you get back isn't, um, probably like a isn't, isn't as significant, then you might not care to, you know, to, um, I'm getting turned around when I'm trying to explain, but you. you point, the point is though, all that, all those points are valid in a traditional information material context. The point is that there isn't any known, um, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, any well-accepted uh, evaluation that says that Google is better than Bing for that matter. The reason is that the web search by itself is far more difficult problem for many, many reasons. Among the one being, we don't know all the documents out there because it is not possible to manually set up the correct standards. Because um, uh, finding all the documents is often less important than finding uh, a few very uh, useful documents. And all those are, in many of those cases, are subjective. What you consider to be the best result for a search query may not be the best result for me, for the same search query. And so uh, when you want to set up an agreement like this track thing, there's a committee of people and they decide. Right? Human, you know, humans get together and they decide what is right and what is wrong. And uh, setting, doing that thing up, uh, doing that thing for something, something like search engine, not for a corpus of uh, literature or documents, is far harder. So, or it's typically not even done. So, in that context, uh, yeah, as Dr. mentioned, it's quite hard to get hold of all the pages on the web. Uh, so it's often not known how many pages are really out there because every, uh, every, every day, every minute, there are pages added. So it's hard to come up with a proper number to say, hey, this is the number of relevant documents for any given query. Um, yeah, however, as he mentioned, for a particular uh, uh, specific data set, you can have a gold standard based on which you can decide how is your search engine performing. No. So, you said there are some pages that are not frequently indexed, like, like person's home page. Say again? You said oh, yeah, there I are, gave an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, not frequently to, crawled for indexing. Yeah, mm -hmm. not crawled. So, get to know that it is not getting updated frequently, right. you have mm -hmm. to call, right? That's solely to start with, yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so how does this this, this thing hand get handled? Um, so, so I would say this is specific to, sorry? It is, it is maintaining history. Then you get uh, called this time it didn't update it, and uh, this time it didn't update it. So you decide that it is not fake, only get updated. You, so in Explorer you don't have to go to that page. Is mm -hmm. there something called? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. and. Uh, uh, so this is specific to the crawler implementation what you have. So you can have multiple ways of doing what you just now mentioned. So one of them is you basically crawl the page. The next time when you crawl, it's the same content. So say you crawl today a particular page and you crawl tomorrow the same page. You found the content to be same and that happens for next five days. 
then you continue it for a month, then you say that you see a pattern in the change. Say it changes every five days or something like that. So in that case, you can as well crawl only on the fifth day as opposed to crawling every day. So you reduced your effort of crawling because for one page it doesn't matter. If it's for billions of pages, if you are able to cut down the number of pages you want to crawl, it's a great relief. Uh, so there, are, yeah, the answer to your question would be to uh, basically to tell that it's specific to a crawler implementation, and definitely uh, there can be multiple ways of doing it. And one of them is looking at the change what you yourself mentioned. So uh, we uh, we saw the keywords. Is there any other kind of searching, search engine? Is it search for uh, beside keyword search? You are talking about keyword search. You search for the specific keywords. So the user may not may want to search for something else. Search for a picture or search for a song or video. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely there are uh, uh, there are search engines built for specific purposes. Yeah, like PubMed. Have you heard of PubMed? So it's basically for uh, adoption. Just mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. So for PubMed, it's a specific type of search engine for uh, medical documents, mm -hmm. right? So it's a, I w he was asking whether there are search engines for different uh, purposes. So no, I was just purposes. I mean, I'm talking about the input, sometimes input. I Google. Uh, the input for Google is a keyword. The kind of words. So the it's a video file. Video file or the picture or whatever. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you're, you're, you're thinking of searching uh, for picture? Uh, yeah, in, in the museum, yes. that database, they, they, they support the kind of search picture and they return on the There's picture. One called, it's called 10i, where you can put in a picture and then it's for uh, similar pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or the same picture. Yeah, I think there are a lot of iPhone apps which does that. It listens to your music yeah. and actually finds oh. the music, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so there are multiple uh, variants. But when it comes to large scale, I believe that these search engines do a very good job. There can be search engines for specific cases or whatever you mentioned. It can be for images. It can be for even songs. I've seen an app which actually, when you record that, it will tell you what song it is. So there are search engines for each of those, which I might not be aware of, of everything, all those. Uh, uh Again, okay. you want a multimedia search engine? Ah, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, there, yeah, there are plenty of them. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Google itself has search engine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for it's itself as well. You can search can images based yeah. on tag, right? But mm -hmm. that's not the same as doing search based on thing. Yeah. Do visual harness, Google visual harness. But on the Mac, there's also that face recognition search to search all of your pictures for a certain. Mm -hmm. Face. Also. Uh -huh. uh, and if you think about Picasa, well, it, so in Picasa, uh, again, uh, you tag one photograph of yours, and it will try to try, tag any photograph of yours it can find. So this is doing. Now, some of the search engines are doing, uh, you know, as much as possible, in a, um, you know, uh, on a vast scale. Uh, uh, obviously, it is hard, uh, and that is where uh, Louis Wanon's work is very important. Uh, that will take us in a different. Visual hand is one word. So, mm -hmm. is the spelling right? Yeah. Visual harness, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one, Dakshan? Oh, yeah, this DNS, yeah. yeah. But, uh, is this the reason? Yeah. 
to the video. Well, okay. Uh, oops. So this was a system. Uh, oops. Where is that? Ah, it's not good. Our such system sucks. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you want to do. Italian, can we implement the search engine? Can you use the uh, Google API to search in the in the analysis uh, database? Do you mean Google API? Use the uh, Google API. Well, I mean, um, what 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 technology do you use for the search engine analysis? Um, still have this to is like all the content they, they in order even. This is a library system. Um, okay. Just basically a keyword search of one thing. Keyword search. Okay, why does it open? Uh, can I save it? Okay. Actually, you can save it to my desktop. Hmm. See, that should have a keynote, keynote. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, a keyword. Visual. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and the, the properties? Yeah. Okay, so look, let's look at this here a little bit. Look at this here. So what this system did was that it had, this was a, an image processing, uh, image search engine, and um, uh, like if you if you see Google uh, pictures or Flickr, then what happens? It looks for uh, tags for those pictures and searches on those tags, right? That is keywords, right? So that is one aspect of the search. Then if you look at um, if you look at image, the image. Um, may have attribute in the sense that suppose I know that uh, image has a, uh, here are the things, image is from a country, image is, uh, has a particular feature of the image, image um, is about a product or some something that has a price, image, um, uh, you know, itself has a size, you know, how big, how many pixels it is like that. Um, uh, and uh, suppose, so here you see the search is on flower garden. And then there are um, uh, things that are properties that are relevant to the flower garden uh, or flower that may show up here. So for example, one of the things that may come up is number of petals that the flower has, right? So in this case, you have the attributes or properties of the subject portrayed in the image that you can search from. Obviously, how do you get it? You can't. You, you don't have typical image processing algorithms are not good, good enough to give you those properties. So often they tend to be manually created. Or what happens is that these images are part of a database. Suppose I have a product part catalog. So I have product part, I think, but there's all this other metadata, right? Then you can search on all that metadata, which is structured data, data right? This keyword is on the textual element, unstructured data. This attribute is on structured ele uh, elements. And then there is an image component which involves a color. So it says find an image that, I, I can click on this image and they say that would imply to the search engine, give you the images that match closest to the color, uh, you know, uh, portrayed and color, compo you know, in this image. Color, comp color um, you know, kind of, uh, you look at the spectrum of that and try to match them. Composition meaning kind of what area, you know, where there is this image, what are the kind of a background, those are things. Texture, there is a, there are software available that will tell you texture of an image. For example, you have a, a photograph of a brick or brick building. Then by, say, find me image like that, you likely find other things that have brick. And um, a structure of the image where the elements, uh, uh, I forget now exactly what this, how the structure is defined, but these are all image processing related search, right? So this is a very comprehensive search um, uh, system, 
where there are three elements. Keyword element, where they, that will explore the textual uh, description uh, associated with the image. Uh, uh, attributes or domain specific properties. Domain, if it's flower, it will have different properties than if it is a, uh, if, if it is a, uh, you know, um, household part, it is a different property, you know, something that is, uh, or if it is a, uh, you know, uh, whatever, whatever the domains there are, right? So, so uh, if it is on uh, landscape images, very different properties. And then image search, which is about, um, uh, so many, pop -top, you know, that involves image processing itself, meaning a manipulating pixel. And, and trying to find that. This is just a small snapshot of the um, uh, of the approaches when people try to do with uh, digital media, other than text. There is a lot more there today, but I think will take you into a different direction. So basically, this search engine. Let's let, let's defer yeah. this, okay? Because this, this goes far away from our search engine and text analysis. And I have a book on this also, so. Uh, I'll be able to show you many views. Uh, yeah, that's... So I would just open up for questions. I'm done with the presentation. If you have any questions. So next class we'll be talking about uh, two important tools using which you can build your own search engine. Uh, those two tools are called uh, Lucene, one of them. The other one is called Nutch, N-U-T. So we'll see uh, how to use these tools and what are these tools and so that you can build your own search engine. Maybe you can write your own search engine for your website or maybe use it for some uh, crawling of the web or you can use a certain set of documents. Maybe locally on your system you can build your own search engine. So that's what we'll be discussing in the next class. That's a good question, but I don't think I have answered for that correct completely. Um, how do you mean context? The same word that have been used in two different contexts. Okay, so do you do that? Do those two words are of the same meaning? The same word. Uh -huh. But the meanings are applying in two different contexts. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what do you mean by handle. So is it like uh, retrieving or when presenting or when indexing? So I can tell you when when it is indexed, how it is handled. So say for example, if there is a same word, which are uh, say for example, it ha it appears in multiple documents. So if it's a very common word appearing in all the documents, then obviously its score would be low. So the the, the basically it's the TF IDF comes into picture here. Uh, the coming to the context part, um, I frankly I don't know how to answer the question. So, when you are using the same word for two different things that you know it's for two different things, mm -hmm. but the same word can be used by another person for another two different things. So it's hard to say how search engine handles such a situation. But there is when you index the documents, there is something called. Uh, Basically, when you find a word and you find another word, you think those two refer to the same thing, which is like, say, there are synonyms. Mm -hmm. So, those things are handled when you actually index the document. Yeah, I, I have a But I whatever your question was, different from mm -hmm. this, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you talk about context. I don't know what exactly is the context. And so, it depends too how many search terms you have. The more you have, the more. Context, the more yeah. scope you can narrow down. But if you have just one word, I mean, it could be applied to almost anything. Yeah. So such things are, should be. So uh, one thing to keep in mind: whatever you do when you're indexing, you should apply the same techniques for the queries that come to your search engine, right? So if I do stemming when I'm indexing, I should make sure that I do that whenever I process the query as well. Otherwise. I would end up having terms which are not there in my index. So these two things, this is a very important point that you need to keep in your mind when you even build your own search engine or anything of that sort. So make sure that you apply the same techniques while you index as well as apply the same techniques to the query what you get for which you need to retrieve the documents. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Yeah, I got good questions today. Search is relatively accessible topic, so you could uh, have that. Yeah. So sure. what is our plan for the next class? Um, next class, I will give an overview of uh, uh, Lucene mm. and uh, Match. So, so why don't we, have you sent them a link of uh, reading, I think, what are It's there on the uh, group. Okay. Yeah. They, they have files, they have, all the presentations are there on the group. Right. So, um, I'll probably give an overview of how to use those tools and how it can be used. Right. So I think people will have to read them. So, so the other point is that uh, I've seen some of these questions some people ask. Uh, you don't have to spend time and getting get prepared. Uh, the, the class is more like a guidance and you know direction and directed thing. Uh, 